Number nine from paper one of this new hire. It gives you the information. AB is parallel to this line. I say that line itself. And BC is at this angle to the positive X. Could A, B and C, in other words, could these two line segments join together to make a straight line? Well, they would obviously join together because they've got the same point, but do they go in the same direction? So I want the angles. I've got the angle for this one, so what's the angle for this one? Or you could do the other way around. What's the gradient of this one? And what's the gradient of that one? And then make the gradient statements. Maybe we'll do it that way around. So, what's the gradient of this? Rearrange it. Y is negative root 3x, so that means its gradient is negative root 3. So that's the gradient of AB as well, since it's parallel to it. This one here, the gradient of BC would be the tangent of 150. Now, the tangent of 150, if you use your all sine tan cos, puts it into a negative part. So it's going to be the negative of the tan of, and if that's 150 of 30 degrees, check with your little triangle, 1, 2, root 3, there's the 30. So the tan would be the opposite over the adjacent, that's 1 upon root 3. And now you make your statement. MAB is not equal to MBC. They may well be going down, but they're going down at different directions. Which means that A, B and C are not collinear. Usually you get the question the other way around. Where the gradients are the same. And then you have to make the additional little statement. Ah, but are they joined up at B? But here, since they're not even, not even got the same direction, that's the end of it. I would think. Number 10 from paper 1 of this new hire, 2015, gives you this information. The tan of 2 times x is 3 quarters. Now x is just between 0 and pi up and 4, so it's quite small. What's the value of cos 2x? Well, notice the two x's are the same angle, so you could just generate that from your triangle. If the tan and this angle will be a 2x in it, if the tangent is 3 quarters, opposite or adjacent, then that makes that a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And straight away, the cos of 2x will be the adjacent, which is, over the hypotenuse, which is 4 fifths. Then it says, what about cos x then? Well, you don't just try and half that triangle and say, oh, that'll just be one and a half up then, keep everything else the same. No, there's a connection between cos 2x and cos x. Cos 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1. So you can find cos x from this. 2 cos squared x will be, take that across, 1 plus ooh, cos 2x. So that's 1 plus 4 fifths. That'll be 9 fifths. Now just work your way down to x. That's a v squared there. Divide by 2. So cos squared x will be dividing by 2. will make it 9 upon 10. Now take the square root and you're almost there. Well, the square root of 9 is nice, that's 3, but the square root of 10 you're kind of stuck with, so that's root 10. Now it could be plus or minus that. But you know all sine tan cos that if you're in the first quadrant here, everything's positive. So you know that since cos x is greater than 0, that means that cos x must be the positive part of it. I think you probably have to make this statement. So that's 3 upon root 10.